Now we're gonna do the crash test and <laughs> f her up right into the wall of the Home Depot. So I think today, guys, is gonna be an interesting video because the EV cars, they are so popular right now and the Tesla 3, I think it's everywhere. Everybody dreaming about this car, everybody wants the electric Tesla car because the tax credit, EV credit, uh in this year much more than before and the prices for that car it's more affordable right now so you can buy the tesla 3 but if you cannot buy it you cannot afford it but you still want to be ev driver so you have that option as a nissan leaf and right now i want to introduce two of them that's 2021 s plus leaf and that's uh, 2012 leaf sl they both equipped with a lot of different things it might be helpful during your uh daily you know driving in the city or maybe out the city but what's the point to buy those cars and for example this car you can buy it about 15 17 thousand i would say so used with about 50 thousand miles and this car i think it's more interesting and more attractive because the prices for the old leaf it's so much cheaper you can buy it from five till seven thousand with low mileage but uh, what the cost of that car gonna be when you're gonna buy the old leaf for cheap and you want to drive it on the battery only but is the battery gonna last long enough so you can enjoy that ev car or it's gonna be dead and you're gonna pay eight nine thousand for the battery only is it worth it to buy it let's see right now so this body leaf it's been on the market since 2011 and the warranty for this car was only five six years and so basically this 2012 it's out of warranty completely and what's the most interesting thing about this car when it charged it shows you the bars uh is it fully charged or not and next to it there is like a gas level but it's actually battery level and new battery is supposed to be 12 bars and when the car used to be under the warranty so if the bar is going down to i think eight bars or less the nissan they've been replacing battery for free unfortunately this car right now has seven bars so it's out of warranty and right now basically from 12 bars we're going all the way to seven and the range on this car it's about 50 60 miles and the batteries keep gonna going down and basically sooner or later you're going to get a range about 10 15 miles that's super crazy so that's why those cars they so cheap and sometimes you might gonna find it for three four thousand on the market but again you have to be sure you buying the car with good battery because sometimes even the mileage might gonna be high but somebody replaced the battery or rebuild it and that level battery level life if it's all the way on the top and you have about 12 11 uh, bars of the battery life means it's good so you buying the good battery good ev car for cheap but if this car has low mileage even 20 30 miles a uh, thousand miles on it and the battery life it's only like four or five bars means this car is dead that's why they're so cheap because the cost of the battery replace it or rebuild it it's much more than the car itself but what about the car overall it is a nice city car the design it's kind of bubble and in 2011 i think it was super super like kind of future futuristic design of the nissan but right now it looks just fine and sometimes funny because i think more like older people driving this car in the city or they're not driving it at all because 10 miles range and the cost of the battery the car just sitting on the side at the house and it's kind of sad news for the owner and for the car itself because the car is gonna die eventually and the battery is gonna be discharged completely and there is nothing to do with that car so the parts are cheap the cost of maintenance basically it's nothing you just need the brake parts but again you might don't even need them the tires they last forever and the brakes like i say it lasts forever there is a uh, brake fluid there is some uh, fluid the transmission oil you might have to replace it if you need it but again nobody doing that believe me i never see any owner of the nissan leaf who told me you know i just replaced the uh 
change the transmission oil and the car drives much better. No, basically they buy the car and they drive until the end, till the battery is going to be completely dead. And if they do have someone or they know the shop who's going to rebuild the battery for cheaper than 8,000, maybe 3,000, 2,000, I don't know how much. I never done it before and honestly, I don't want to do that. And uh, But you have to be aware of that and think twice before you buy cheap Nissan Leaf. I think it's better if you're going to put that money as a down payment and buy newer one with better range and uh, better technology. So basically Nissan, they improve it on a new body Leaf and that car lasts much longer. So the range for the new one, it's 2020, 220, 240, depends what kind of package you're buying. But those cars, the top, I think the top of the, uh, on the new battery, I saw it like 100 or 90 miles. I don't know how much they're supposed to be from the factory, but I never see more than 100 on the fully charged Nissan Leaf first generation. So that's just crazy. They're just insane. And again, the price for this car, if you're going to go somewhere online and check them, you might going to find the car for 2500 or 3000 Uh and it might gonna be so attractable, you know, like you have to buy it EV car for three thousand instead of buying old junky Toyota or any Honda. But again, think twice, check it out, and find the, the right mechanic who's gonna tell you don't buy it. So the second generation Leaf came on the market back in 2018, and this car has a warranty of five years or 60,000 miles for the powertrain or any EV electric components or the battery, I think it's up to 100,000 miles on the battery. And uh, so it is improved, it's much better range. And I honestly, I never heard about many problems of the battery discharging fast or it's uh, drying, same as the old leaf. Even 2018, 2019, the people driving it, they're still driving it. They're losing some range from 220. They're going up to 180, 170, but I never heard about any major problem. Maybe it's gonna come up later on, but for now, this car, it's much better design. It looks much better. Even the headlights on the old one, they kind of ugly, but this one looks like normal, regular car. Inside of this car, it's kind of about the same space and uh, it is comfortable city uh, car so if you want to take it on a trip somewhere far away uh, I wouldn't do that be I wouldn't do so because on the high speed this car just like a bubble it's going left and right and it's not so stable but again if you have no choice you have only one car to buy and you want to use only this one for your long trips for sure the second generation leaf much better than the first one and uh, there is a lot of different parts inside the car especially maybe uh, like the engine like the transmission itself it's same as the old one but inside the interior there is a lot of components they use the same from the older car that's why it's kind of reminding me the first generation of the nissan leaf but other than that the new headlight i mean the <clears throat> other than that there is a new dashboard there is a new uh, multimedia system there is a new steering wheel and a lot of things are new and kind of modern than the old one and again is it a good choice to buy this car instead of any other ev car maybe i'm not a big fan of the ev cars but again if i want to buy budget ev car i would go with japanese i would go with toyota or the nissan and again check warranty before you buy the car even if you buy in 2018 2019 there is might be some warranty left from the factory and i think it's going to help you a lot because any used battery for this car costs a lot and any job you have to do with ev on this nissan it's not cheap at all it's not like toyota prius because they everywhere they're much cheaper but the nissan leaf not so many shops want to do the job and they don't want to do it for cheap that's the point of that so there is a lot of things you have to check before you buy an ev car even the tesla has their own points to check before you buy it but again if you want to see the korean cars like the kia or hyundai or you want to go with nissan leaf the second generation which is about uh, you can find about the same price there is a lot of kia uh, niro and all kind of hyundai's 
but the Nissan I think is going to be much better choice at that point. Я, блядь, на ходу придумываю, чтобы ты понимал. So the first generation Leaf, it is a SL edition. And what we got as a SL edition, it is a heated seats on the front and on the back also. So the rear bench has a heated element inside that. And it's kind of cool. So we have a navigation map and it's old style, but it is working. And the thing I like a lot, that's the serious exam. It is working. It's all good. It's kind of nice, comfortable car overall and what i like the most about the nissan leaf third generation that's the materials i mean the seats if you're gonna touch it it's a nice it's a nice material they use for this car all the plastic not making sound when you during your drive and uh, like all the newer cars they have a lot of <clears throat> all newer cars they using the hard plastic so every time you go going over the bump or something so it's making noise because they touching each other and making that weird plastic noise but this car uh suddenly i mean this car somehow they made it and they use those materials i think the price to build this car much more than the price they've been selling it even the steering wheel it's heated so we have a button on the left side of the dashboard we can turn it on and the steering wheel is going to be heated up but again the most important thing when you're talking about nissan leaf what's the bars left on a battery life and like i said this car has only seven and it's kind of tricky to buy this car and drive it so later on like i say you're probably gonna be replacing it for much more uh for much more money whatever you pay for this but overall it's nice it's nice and comfortable car to drive it in the city and one of the questions i'm always asking myself when i'm checking the car with low mileage because this car has 51,000 miles only and it's 2012 why this car has low mileage and it's 10 years old 11 years old why and uh, all there is always answer for that as a, it was a second car it's been parked in garage i have some other cars and i was driving it but the nissan leaf it is cheap to drive why are you not driving it why are you not charging it and driving it every day i think the answer for this question is because the 10 years ago even seven eight years ago it was not so many charging stations all over the city or between the cities if you want to go somewhere in san diego san francisco right now there is many many of them everywhere even the the shopping centers they do have it and most of the time it is a free of charge so basically at that time people been buying this car and driving it but driving it like kind of uh with curious i think so they were not sure if this car gonna be uh gonna make it from a to b so i think they've been using and buying this car as a spare one just maybe for fun because ev cars back in 2012 13 14 15 uh it was not so many on the market only maybe tesla s that's that's all it was and the nissan leaf that time was kind of no, i wouldn't say it was super popular but it was uh it was interesting interesting buy because in 2012 2013 yeah like i say it was only tesla s that's all i remember from ev cars none of the toyota or honda been more popular than the nissan leaf so right now we got 11 years old car with only 51 000 miles and it's a good price it's a nice car but i wouldn't buy it i wouldn't buy it because the price for the battery much much more than the car itself so basically you're going to buy the car which is going to sit on the side of your home when the battery gonna die and you're not gonna be able to sell it for any money maybe it's like thousand dollars somebody gonna buy it for parts to take out the seats or your heated steering wheel that's all but overall like i say it's plenty of space inside the car all the boxes there is a lot of there is a lot of different boxes you can put a lot of stuff and the main reason why this battery was dying so fast because it's not the liquid cool it so basically even the ford ev focus 
they do have a coolant inside the battery so it's cooling down the battery basically the battery not overheating and it gives you more capacity it gives you more battery life like the second generation they fix it they change it but third generation there is a main problem with that and i think some of the shops who's doing the battery for the nissan leaf they are adding somehow maybe the fans like the prius has or something else so they cooling down the battery itself and that's how they're rebuilding it and improving the system for the older generation nissan leaf again if you just want to try it and do it for fun buy the uh, old leaf with high mileage with drained dead battery and you might gonna find the shop or you might gonna buy the battery and try to add some uh, fans on it because I know for a fact there is a guy who put two batteries both together and he did the coolant for that and I think his range he been telling me about 350 miles range I have no idea I didn't check that car but that guy I know for a fact he's still working on a Nissan Leaf only and I think he has a lot of customers because they all get into the same point when you want to sell the car for nothing or you want to build the battery and extend the life for the car and extend the life for the car itself for much much longer but you have to pay the price for that so the second generation lift it's kind of modern right now if you're going to compare any other uh, cars from 2020 era they're going to be about the same so the huge screen in the middle the steering wheel it's about the same not about it is the same as the other nissans on the same years available on the market the keys are exactly the same old leaf and new leaf and there is a lot of switches came to the new leaf from third generation like the main master switch for the windows there is a push start button exactly the same as the old leaf and the transmission shifter Transmission shifter they brought from the old first generation lift to the second one because I think it never had any problems with itself so they didn't change it and they put exactly the same but what about this car this car is much nicer inside the seats itself they are closer to the ground so when you sit in in this car you sit in like on the chair when you sit on the other one the older one you kind of sit in high and i would say it's not the suv to be that way and why they did it because of the battery itself they could do the seat itself shorter not lift it up so high so the second generation leaf it doesn't have the same way they did on the other one like the battery life and the range when you charge in the car so there is no more bars going down when the the battery is dying because it's a liquid uh cool it battery so and i think they're assuming the car gonna last much longer without any problems with the battery itself but i have no idea because this second generation came up on the market back in 2018 and it's only five years since the car been selling and i don't think there is any probably somebody experiencing the major problem with the battery but again all the most of those cars they still under the warranty and the nissan gonna take care of it so this s edition it's not same as the other one it's not the sl so what we do not have we do not have a heated seats we do not have navigation system but climate control is still here series exam is still here working but i think it's only available on a plus or it might be optional on the s because usually nissan s any s they it is a cheapest kind of version of of that car so if we take the nissan Sentra s or ultima s it's going to be not the same as the sl but the cluster itself it is kind of modern there is a there is a lot of things you can do with that cluster and see a lot of information you might need it for the battery but on the second generation they actually add it as a battery temperature so it means if you want to drive it during the summertime and it's really hot outside or you're planning to do the long trip you might be checking that before it's too late before the battery going all the way to the high temperature and your car gonna get stuck so if for some reason you're overheating your battery just pull over just wait a little bit till the battery gonna cool down and you're gonna be good 
And right now, this car, we have 91% of the battery charge. So it shows 200 miles range for this car, much better than the other one. So is it worth it to buy this Nissan for 15,000? I think it is, like I say, because the Hyundai or Kia, it's not like I'm not trusting those cars. I am trusting those cars, but the Nissan itself, it is a Japanese car. It's much better improved technology on the battery. Plus the materials they're using for this car, it's much nicer. You feeling like a real car, even it is only EV. I'm not a huge fan of EV cars, to be honest. So the main point, if you cannot buy the Tesla, you cannot afford it, buy Nissan Leaf and you're going to be happy with that. Maybe for the next couple of years or maybe even four years, but it's not guarantee you, your car not going to die suddenly for some other unknown problems. <laughs> so there is a short test drive I'm going to do on a new body because the old body is fully discharged. I mean, 10 miles. So I have to find the charging station for that car. But what I can tell overall about the new body style, the old body style, a lot of people drove it and it's not nothing wonder for me was the point to drive the new body style because honestly, I never drove it myself for the uh, period of time just because I don't like EV cars, especially Nissan or Hyundai, it doesn't matter. EV, it's not the cars I like to drive, but it feels good. It is super nice uh, for the, like I say, daily driving city car. And again, it gives you uh, peace of mind when you have 200 miles range on an EV car. So basically if you have a, a free supercharging, I mean free charging station at your house and you can do it overnight and in the morning, it's more than enough for a day or two to drive this car with fully charged battery. So you don't have to think about your battery is gonna go dead and you're gonna get stuck somewhere. So it is nice. And I think, like I said before, it is worth it to buy this car, even if you cannot buy it for the full price right away, just put the money you were supposed to put it on the old body as a down payment for the new body and drive it because you're probably gonna get the car with still factory warranty, at least on your EV system. And it's good. It's kind of windy outside today, but in this car, the sound proven is really good because I cannot hear what's going on outside on the older one. There is a car noise, exhaust noise, and the wind itself were making a lot of noise inside that leaf. But in this one, nothing. What I can hear, that's the noise from the transmission as a whole EV doing. That's it. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I don't know if anybody got it. Uh... So the short test I'm gonna do on the bump. I'm gonna go over the bump without pushing the brake. So this way I can tell it is a soft, nice suspension for this small city car. Uh, now we're gonna do the crash test and her <laughs> up right into the wall of the Home Depot. But the coolest point about EV cars, any EV car, doesn't matter it's old Nissan or it's a new Nissan, uh, it is a Tesla or any Hyundai, Toyota, Lexus, doesn't matter what, you have the your whole uh, amount of the horsepower, they are available right away. So you don't have to wait until your engine gonna reach 3,000 or 4,000 RPM, 6,000, doesn't matter. Uh, you have the whole power right under your pedal. So as soon as you push, step on the gas pedal right away, you're gonna get the whole amount of horsepower available right here. That's cool. And I think a lot of Tesla 3 get in an accident because there is a lot of people who jump in from the, from the simple cars to EV car Tesla and that horsepower availability, I think it's not a good point. And I think for some of the drivers that that availability of the horsepower available right away, same time as soon as you step on the gas, it's not a good point. 
So it was a Nissan Leafs first and second generation choice is always yours. It's only my opinion, but it is a nice car, much better than the previous body. So go for it.